Are we uh, ready to go? Perfect. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I guess I, I don't have any slides, so I'm just going to use, use this here. Hello, my name is Thor. Uh, I gave myself a, a Chinese name. Um, I think it's Lei Shen. Lei Shen? Is that correct? Which I, I think is uh, Thunder God. So basically Thor, God of Thunder. Uh, I also like how kind of the last symbol sort of looks like a hammer. So that works out well. Uh, I work here at Stripe. Um, very excited to be hosting the inaugural Jamstack uh, meetup. And I want to talk about e-commerce, static, so it's ecstatic. I like puns, so yeah, uh, ecstatic commerce. So one thing that's really cool, and kind of when I first dug into uh, Gatsby, it's roughly a year ago, sort of Christmas time last year, uh, I was living in Amsterdam, and um, the weather was pretty bad, so I was like, okay, let's, let's have a new, uh, new blog. So I got this fantastic domain, which is Thor.news. Yeah, I failed to get Thor.dev. I have Thorweb.dev, which is also my Twitter handle. But um, yeah, Thor.news, it's secure, thanks to Netlify. Woo! Didn't have to do anything. Um, but yes, so, and then I got playing around with, you know, static sites, so I kind of heard, it's great for blog posts because you're basically creating content once, uh, and then it's mainly being read. Uh, so the content doesn't actually change that much. And so for something where you have a static page, kind of a blog is perfect. You, you pretty much just put it on the edge of the internet, and you serve it really quickly to your users. Now, if you take something like um, payments, uh, payments is something where there's a lot of dynamics involved. Um, like, you know, if you, if you want to accept Apple Pay, uh, Google Pay, uh, or just in, in, in general validating, you know, as, as you know, as front end developers, we can't really trust anything that happens on the front end, right? That's just the world we live in. Like any content that is coming from the front end, we just can't trust it. Um, and so you actually need a back end component to verify that, you know, what you want to be charging for this uh, item, for example, if you're shipping physical goods, is actually what you know needs to be charged, and no one has tampered with it. So what was really cool and kind of timing-wise, um, we built a new version of Stripe Checkout, uh, and actually there is a version which we call the client-only checkout, where you can actually use a static page and redirect off to a Stripe-hosted checkout page for the actual um, payment. Which means the back end that is actually doing the validating um, of, of the payment amounts is Stripe itself. So that means for that to work, you actually need to put the SKUs and the product information. So SKUs, uh, SKUs stands for stock keeping unit. Um, you need to put that information into Stripe, and then you can actually have the SKU IDs on, in your static page and just say, hey, the customer wants to buy this item. Uh, let's go ahead and redirect to checkout with my SKU ID. And so some great folks have built a bunch of plugins that actually allow you to very easily uh, import, import Stripe checkout uh, as well as information from the, uh, your, your Stripe uh, account into your Gatsby page. And so I basically just built on top of that. And um, you know, if you want to read this tutorial, I mainly wrote it to get free Gatsby swag. Um, so we're going to look at the, the Gatsby swag so there. But here, um, there are a couple examples um, that we can look at. And they are uh, available on GitHub as well. So we have this uh, Gatsby e-commerce starter. Uh, some cool feature that uh, Sean did mention, we can actually have this deploy to Netlify button, um, where we can also specify, uh, where was it? the I think there's like a Netlify, ah, uh, yeah, the Tomo file. So we can actually say, um, 
we need uh, a, a Stripe public key to identify our Stripe account. Uh, and so we can put that in the terminal file. And when someone says deploy to uh, Netlify, we can actually grab those environment variables uh, and store them uh, in Netlify. And so at build time, they, they will be available. So let's quickly look uh, at this demo here. So it's very much kind of the Gatsby starter. Uh, and in its easiest form, I have a buy button. And when I click the buy button, I get redirected to the Stripe checkout page, uh, and I can buy this book. That's great. So that is very, very much kind of the easiest uh, use case. For example, you want to collect donations or just like sell uh, a PDF file. That's something very easy to get started with. Now, in the advanced example, what we're actually doing here is we're using uh, a plugin that's called, um, I think, Source. Let me see. Okay. Let me, let me, yeah, 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 yeah. a lot of content in there. So the Gatsby Source uh, Stripe plugin, uh, and what this does is at build time, it actually queries the Stripe API to get all the products that you have available in your Stripe account and actually puts them into the page statically. So here we can have all our, of our different products. And another cool feature with um, Netlify is what they call the build hooks. So in Stripe, you can have web hooks um, that are generated, so web hook events when the, uh, the product information changes, for example. So you can point that web hook event at the, uh, the Netlify build hook, and any time someone changes product information in the Stripe dashboard, your page will be rebuilt, and the information will be pulled from the, from the site, uh, and all your products will show up here. Okay, cool. But so that's still sort of very basic. So if we look at um, kind of some projects that, that were built to sort of give you a bit more dynamic functionality. So Netlify actually has an open source project, uh, which is called GoCommerce. Um, so it's, it's a headless e-commerce uh, backend written in Go uh, for Jamstack sites. And the way it works is you uh, generate um, your product metadata uh, and put that into your static sites. Uh, and then there is a, a JavaScript library that facilitates a communication between the front end and the back end. And I believe the back end then scrapes the metadata um, to actually get the information of, of the price and the amount. I'm actually not sure if that's because, I mean, if that data is on the front end, we can't really trust that. So I need to dig into that if, um, if that's actually secure. But it is one option. Uh, some other cool thing uh, that uh, Sarah has built, Sarah works at, at Netlify with, uh, with Sean, is an uh, e-commerce store with Netlify functions. So if you need more dynamic functionality, you can use Netlify functions uh, to do the validation there. Um, and then, for example, redirect to checkout, or you could actually uh, create the payment right in the Netlify function if you wanted to. Uh, but if you want to take this even further, and that's where we get to the Gatsby Swag Store, and the Gatsby Swag Store is really cool. Like My favorite feature of um, the Swag Store is you can log in with your GitHub account. And I think this here is using uh, Auth0. So you log in with your GitHub account. And if you have contributed to the Gatsby project, uh, it will check for that. So based on your, your GitHub account name, if the internet is working. And it will see, yay, I've made two uh, contributions to Gatsby. And so I can now actually claim uh, free swag. So I, I think I'm not going to click this, because if I click this, I think it's going to show me a discount code. And I don't want you all to see this. <laughs> but I think, is it true way that we have yes. discount codes for the swag store? Should we keep that till the end? 
Ooh, we can give this now. Okay, so do you want to grab the mic? Uh, you, you, you can do this. Okay, I can do this. So we haven't rehearsed this. But um, let me log out. So just to show you, you don't need to be logged in. What do we want to buy? I like this uh, hat. Oh, the jam sack jammies are actually fantastic. Um, I <laughs> I did a, a, a live episode with um, Jason Langstaff, uh, who now actually also works at Netflix. There seems to be a theme there, uh, but he used to he used to work for Gatsby, um, and uh, we did a we did a live stream about uh, kind of integrating Stripe into uh, a Gatsby site, and he loves the Jamstack jammies. So let's do that. Oh, we need a size. Mm. Ah. Right, what do we get? get? A large one. Cool. Now, while we're figuring out the discount code, we can actually check. Um, maybe let's go to the GitHub repository first. One second. So, the code for this is uh, open source. Am I not seeing right? Wait. Ah, uh, no, I think I need to. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, this project is open source on GitHub, uh, and oh, this dog is just too adorable. They don't sell it on the Swag Store, unfortunately. But uh, so here, um, it is a Gatsby site, but it uses the Shopify JavaScript by SDK. Um, so the whole backend is uh, actually Shopify. So all of the kind of logistics in terms of like checking if uh, items are in stock, uh, if discount codes are valid, and um, kind of all the things that you need to do are happening on the back end within uh, Shopify. And so what we can actually do here is we look, if we look into this, let's go to the network tab, and we add this to the card. We can see that here there is a request. Can you see that? Is that large enough? So we can see that there is a request fired off to uh, the Shopify GraphQL API. Uh, we can see that the information that is being sent is uh, a checkout ID and the line items. So what you can notice here is that um, similar to kind of the approach with Stripe where you have the, the SKU ID, here it's called the variant ID, uh, as well as the quantity and the checkout ID. And what is actually happening here is that the whole cart is managed on the Shopify site. So there's actually no piece of JavaScript written to, to manage uh, the cart itself. That happens on, on the Shopify site. Uh, OK. Do we have a? Yes. It will be. OK. So Gatsby has given us a discount code for the swag store. Uh, valid from today until January 6th, and the discount code is Jam 2019. Let's try it this one. Jam 2019. So Jam. Woo! Apply. So as you can see here now, this is actually uh, the Shopify page. Uh, so this is the Ch Shopify checkout page here. And yes, we got a discount. Ten bucks. Oh, ten bucks forty cents. That's great. Cool. Uh, I'm not going to buy them now. <laughs> Sorry. I I still have my my free swag. But uh, something I wanted to actually dig into uh, the Shopify JavaScript by SDK a little bit. Uh, it's actually a pretty pretty neat project. Let me see if I can. Bit bigger, bigger here. So, yeah, we initialize the client. Basically, you have your Shopify domain and um, an access token. Uh, that's kind of similar to the um, the, the the publishable key uh, of the Stripe uh, the Stripe API. And so here, you can kind of fetch your products information. So um, the the uh, JavaScript by SDK will actually then translate this into uh, GraphQL requests. 
And here you can see, so we're uh, creating a checkout. So in order to get the checkout ID, we call uh, checkout create on the client. Uh, and then in order to update a checkout, uh, we can see here, we provide the uh, checkout ID. And we, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. So we can update. No, what I want is adding line items. So let's actually have uh, a look in the code base here. So here we're uh, adding the line items. What we can see is this is going to do uh, an API request. So the GraphQL request we've seen earlier. Uh, and then basically, we're just grabbing the checkout uh, object uh, and updating the state of our uh, React application, which then updates the cart, uh, like the amount in the cart, uh, and things like that. So one thing that I thought was interesting, so if we take the checkout, there was, um, if we look here, Kind of the items in cart. So let's see how um, items in cart, how that is uh, calculated. So I think we have, uh, did I, wait, wait, wait. Ah, here. So basically from, um, Kind of the state object, we're taking the checkout object, we're looking at the line items, and then we're just reducing those and looking at the total, uh, kind of the quantity, basically adding up the quantity of, uh, of all the items. Now, what I thought was interesting, and I actually only recently learned that in Chrome, what you can do is if you do command option F, you can actually search across the whole source code uh, of the page. And you get kind of all the instances within um, this page where this is happening. So if we uh, look at that here, OK, that's commented out. Uh, wait. Uh, OK. I was hoping to find the actual, is it happening here? No, that's the comment of doubt piece. Uh, I think it's here. OK. So here, where we actually run this, so we add the line item, and then we look at the checkout. So let's actually look at the checkout object that comes back. So if we maybe add this to the card again. OK, we need a size. So now what we can see is we have the checkout object here. And we have the uh, line items. I can't, can I not click into it? Oh, gotcha. OK. And so the line items, we have an array. Do we, am I looking at the wrong thing? Oh, yes. Thank you. Do we only have one item in the, in the card? OK. Right. All right, so not entirely sure why. OK, let's try this again. So if we edit, have it here. I guess we can look at the scope variable. So in the checkout, we get our line items. Uh, OK, so it's the actual variance. So we have two. Do we have two separate products in there? And then if we look at the quantity, does it have a quantity? Yeah, you missed it. You missed it. Where is it? Below ID. Quantity. Below ID. Below one more below. Ah, yes, very good. I'm blind today. OK, so this is quantity one. And then this is quantity two adds up to three. OK, yeah, that works out. What's interesting, though, is if you look at the uh, API request, and we probably need to actually finish the API request. Let's do that. 
what we see what comes back in the line items, we actually get a list of edges. So it seems like the, the JavaScript by SDK is actually transforming uh, the result there and sort of abstracting away the GraphQL interface, um, which is interesting. But yeah, so the point here is that we're not actually pulling in the content at build time uh, in this scenario, but this is actually facilitating using JavaScript and uh, the Shopify API, so JavaScript APIs, um, to handle the dynamic case where um, I want to check if we still have items in store and update my whole checkout uh, object state. So yeah, that's, that's a cool thing. The Jamstack, you can actually do uh, a good amount of things with it. I guess the, the philosophy is really similar to where um, kind of with mobile apps, the, the front end of your mobile apps is basically statically on your phone installed there, and then you use APIs to handle dynamic actions, and sort of the same approach here. And it works actually quite well for uh, e-commerce. So that's all from me. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and remember the uh, coupon code is JAM2019, and you can buy some lovely Jamstack jammies. Thanks a lot.